lot of people. Holy heck. Yeah, this is crazy. Okay, okay. I'm bringing both accounts over to the island. Yeah. Do we, like, need to talk to each other before we leave the island or what? Yes, we, we'll group up on the island. Uh, travel to the node, yes. On the 6th of October, five adventurers. Myself, the infamous Josh Drive Hayes, Daz and Lorenzo, two of the Nightmare World developers, and Locust, one of my moderators, set out on an old but familiar journey. This journey is, of course... Group Iron Man in Old School RuneScape. Now, you might be wondering why I'm making a video on this. One, I've been playing so much of it that I kind of forgot I was supposed to put out a video today. Two, there is a valuable lesson to be learnt from this. Now, I'm going to give a very quick rundown for those who don't know anything about RuneScape or the Iron Man game mode. Uh, and for those who do know about it, I promise I will be quick. Going back a few years, RuneScape introduced Iron Man mode. It is a fully self-sufficient game mode where you don't interact with players at all. It's essentially single player in a multiplayer world, and as silly as it sounds, people enjoy it. Because the meta, or most efficient tactic available, is in fact to just play the game. There's no buying gold, because you can't trade with people. There's no buying things off the cash shop, because there isn't one. There's no selling dragon bones and dragon hide to the grand exchange or auction house and then just buying everything else you could possibly need instead of gathering it, which is in fact one of the best early game tactics, but it's boring. This forces you to play RuneScape how it was meant to be played. And thousands and thousands of players enjoy this. I tried it because I wanted to relive that experience. However, the lack of playing with friends killed it for me. That was until a few days ago, when Jagex released Group Iron Man. Now, this, is, this probably sounds like an absolute meme to everyone, that, you know, Iron Man was meant to be this game mode where you stand alone and you're self-sufficient, but now there's Group Iron Man, where you are alone but together. And Group Iron Man is essentially five regular Iron Men that can all trade with each other. And that's about it seems utterly pointless and I kind of thought the same but I was going to try it anyway to relive a little bit of the fantasy with my friends and boy was I unprepared for how addictive this was going to get if you're still not understanding what the point of group Iron Man is think of it like this if you go to a club by yourself sure you can have a good time but the only thing that's better than that is going to a club with a close group of friends and usually it's just better to stay in your close group of friends because you know you're going to have fun with these people. There's no outsider influence on, the, on your night and your style of, uh, I was going to say style of play. And then I was going to say that doesn't make sense. But no, that does make sense in its own way. For me, the last few days, I have been glued to this. And this is the first game that has done this in possibly the last five years. And I keep asking myself, why, why has it done this? And it's brought back that thing that I keep saying in videos and on my live streams and in the podcasts, that the journey should be the reward. And yes, Iron Man did provide that experience for a lot of people, but it was missing my friends. I wanted to do that with my friends. This release came out two days ago. I have sunk 23 and a half hours. In fact, by the time, time this is edited, it will be over 24 hours in the last 48 hours. That is insane. To just give some context to why this is so fun, there's certain areas of the game that people don't like to do, but they need the rewards from them and they need the resources. For example, I can't stand doing rune crafting, but to get runes to train your magic, you need to do rune crafting. So here's what's been happening. I have become the dedicated slayer. I'm going out and slaying creatures on tasks to get rewards that can only be dropped by slayer task specific monsters. And I'm giving them out to the rest of the team. It's beautiful, they don't have to do it. Then there's Lorenzo, who's out fishing to supply me, to supply me with food for the combat I'm going into. Then we have Daz, who's doing rune crafting, which nobody else likes, but Daz is content doing it, so we'll let him do it. Locust is doing the Winter Todd minigame. 
because it can get so many cool different rewards. Um, and he likes doing Winstod. Most of us can't stand it at all. So this works out perfectly. And then you've got Josh, whose account is collecting dust because he hasn't logged into it in two days. <laughs> but jokes aside, hopefully now you can see where I'm going with this. We're being forced to play the game properly by not allowing us to trade with other people, except for close friends. And this is how I played it back in the day when it first came out. Me and my close friends jumped in and we only knew each other. So we only traded amongst ourselves and we gave each other the resources from the things we were doing. Which looking back at it now, wasn't efficient in the slightest because I could have just gone and bought them in bulk from somebody else. And although I've been playing this all the time, this has led to me discovering something. No other game could really pull this off. I, I, I've been trying to think of other games that could pull off an Iron Man mode that makes sense. Now I know Path of Exile has done something similar, but that's not really an MMO. I'm trying to think of other MMOs that could pull this off. And honestly, because of most of them having a very aggressive cash shop, I don't think any of them could do it, because it would devalue the hardcore nature of this by allowing you to buy stuff. And you might think, well, just stop people from being able to buy stuff for that game mode. And this is why no game would do it. Because the people that would play the hardcore game mode are the people that would spend lots of money. And no company would ever do that. And I guess one of my main takeaways from this is that, yes, MMOs are supposed to be massively multiplayer and online. And I don't disagree with that. But this has proven to me that a limited party size and a limited player interaction can actually make for a better game sometimes. The only way I can describe this for people that haven't played it or haven't watched other people play it is Dungeons and Dragons. You are a party of five that are all reliant on each other. However, you don't need to be online at the same time. It's a perpetual game of Dungeons and Dragons. If I'm away for the weekend and can't make it to our, our guys going into dungeons and killing bosses, well, guess what? The game doesn't stop. They go together without me, and we do it next week together. But everything that any of you do matters, and you're competing against other five-man adventuring parties in the same world. If one group of players is killing a boss, guess what? Your group isn't. You're waiting for them to finish. The more I play this, the more I can compare it to Dungeons & Dragons. And the beauty of it is, it's a Dungeons & Dragons game that will last years. This isn't something that will be done within a month, done within two months. You can play this for years. I have to say, it's taken me by surprise that this game mode has made a game that I've played for years feel so different. Well, not made a game feel so different, but made me feel so differently about the game. A game I already loved and didn't think I could love any more than I did, I somehow now love twice as much. Now, sure, this game mode update didn't add anything to the game. If anything, it's taken things away from us. But it's done it in such a meaningful way that it really goes to show that not all game updates and not all games need to have hundreds of thousands of new things added to them to keep players interested. Sometimes you can just reuse the old stuff in a creative way. And RuneScape's use of new game modes has absolutely proven this. I'm just going to list off their game modes. And to you, a lot of these might sound boring, but everybody's found a playstyle that they love using these game modes. So we've got Iron Man. I've already explained that, so I'm not going to explain it again. We have Hardcore Iron Man. You have a red icon next to your name to show that you have never died until you do. When you die, you become a regular Iron Man. So if you see a Hardcore Iron Man, you know that they've never died. And playing a Hardcore Iron Man makes you think extremely carefully about how you play. All the standard rules of regular Iron Man also still apply. And then you have Ultimate Iron Man, which honestly is the one Iron Man game mode that, that I don't think I will ever play. And Ultimate Iron Man are not allowed to use banks meaning you can only have the items that you can fit in your inventory, causing you to think very carefully about how you train skills, which items you even bother to pick up, and when you pick them up. I know a lot of people thoroughly enjoy this, so I'm not going to pretend it's not popular. It's not as popular as the others, but the, for those who do play it, they absolutely love it. And now we have Group Iron Man, 
which again, I'm not going to explain to you because I already told you it's Iron Man, but with five Iron Man accounts tied together. But along with this comes something else. Hardcore Group Iron Man, which is exactly the same as Group Iron Man, except every time somebody in your group dies, one life is deducted from your group's five life total. Meaning one player can lose all five of the lives and then your hardcore group just becomes a regular Iron Man group. Honestly, I, um, I'm expecting to see some friendships destroyed because of hardcore group Iron Man. However, if that's something that people enjoy playing, I'm not going to take that away from them. I, I admire anyone who can manage to do that. While I am absolutely content with group Iron Man, it does make me excited to see what's to be added in the future. What further game modes can Jagex do to limit players and expand creativity? Personally, I think the next game mode we're going to see is where players are restricted to an area. The RuneScape map is large and a lot of YouTubers have started doing region locked Iron Man, such as Desert Only, where they, they have put a restriction upon themselves where they are not allowed to leave the desert. It's not enforced upon them by the game, but if Jagex were to add something like this, I can see so many exciting experiences coming to the game, forcing you to think on your feet and think differently about how you play the game. That place that you used to train crafting, well, you can't go there anymore. How else are you going to do it? Find a new way. Now, while this wasn't the video that was going to be coming out today, I'm not going to apologize for it being this, because I do think that this was a very important topic to discuss. Creativity in game design is often overdone and underawarded. This is understated and massively, massively paying off. I'm going to be live over on Twitch right now and for the rest of the night playing group Iron Man. We may throw some games of marbles in there, but honestly, I'm hooked on this. So if you guys want to come along and learn a bit, feel free to drop by. As always, a massive thank you to our patrons and our members. You guys are awesome. You are the guys that allow me to make these opinion piece videos, the ones that aren't going to pull in quite as many views and therefore not as much ad revenue. You guys rock. As always, guys, have an awesome day and a wicked week. And if you're not stopping by the live stream, I'll see you for Tuesday's video.